When the Bible says, be still and know that I am God, it's really telling you to stop everything you're doing. Stop worrying. Stop fighting. Stop resisting and start yielding to God. Start listening to God. There is something about stillness. And I believe that this verse is calling us to be still before the Lord because we need to direct all of our attention, all of our focus on the Lord. You see, when you spend time getting to know the Lord, when you spend time in the presence of Jesus Christ, you will truly be transformed. And I encourage you to desire and hunger for these types of rich encounters in the presence of God. Because it's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can get a personal revelation of who God truly is. It's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can be empowered and filled with courage. The courage to face the world and stand up for Christ. The courage to stand up to the devil and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible presents us with the story of two gardens. The Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane. Adam and Eve disobeyed God's will in the Garden of Eden. However, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Isn't it interesting that there is this huge contrast between what took place in the Garden of Eden and what took place in the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus offers us the greatest lesson of obedience in the Garden of Gethsemane. Whereas we can learn about the painful consequences of disobedience when we look at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In that first garden, Adam and Eve listened to a voice they had no business listening to. And as a result, they took a fall. They fell into sin. They fell into disobedience. But in the second garden, Jesus took a stand. He set his own feelings aside and he obeyed the voice of God the Father. You see, Genesis 3, verse 9 says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Think of that. Because of sin, in the first garden, God sought Adam. However, in the second garden, Jesus sought God. He left the disciples to go and seek God Almighty. Matthew 26, verse 39 says, He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And really pay attention to the contrasting events that happened between the two gardens. In Eden, Adam hid from God. In Gethsemane, Jesus made himself fully available to God. In Eden, the devil deceived Adam and Eve to a tree that led to their spiritual death. But oh, in Gethsemane, our Lord Jesus began that journey of love, pain, and sacrifice that ended on the cross, but led us to eternal life. Now, these two gardens are symbolic of a state of living for each and every one of us. We all have choices. We all have a measure of control when it comes to how we live and what we do each day. And what I'm trying to put across to you, or rather, what I'm trying to demonstrate, is that when it comes to your spiritual life, you're either living like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, where you believe the lies of the enemy, you act on those lies, and you disobey God. It's a state where one lives in sin and hides from the presence of God because of their shame. Or... You're living like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Sacrificial living. Your will, God, and not my will. That type of living. Where it's all about God. You may be sorrowful and troubled at times, but you still choose to obey God. You may be overwhelmed, but you still choose to obey God. And I want to encourage you today, friends. Be like Christ. Separate yourself from others and seek the face of the Lord in prayer. 
Seek to be willing and obedient. God is firmly in control. God is all-knowing. God is almighty. Isaiah 45, 22-23 says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. In those moments where we are still before God, we need to realize just how mighty God is, just how powerful God is. The Bible tells us there is no one and nothing that can be compared to God. We need to remember this. Nothing and no one is worthy to be competing for the number one spot of your heart. The prophet Isaiah received a revelation that should inspire all of us to recognize God for who he truly is. Listen carefully to what Isaiah 45 verse 2 to 7 says. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel, for Jacob my servant's sake and Israel my elect. I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is a wonderful revelation of just who God is. God should be first. Be like Christ. Separate yourself from others and seek the face of the Lord in prayer. Seek to be willing and obedient.